Hey, Sneaky Linux back in the house with the second of our series of What Linux for You. Okay. Now, last time we done LXE, which is a deviant of LXE or Lubuntu, which runs Ubuntu basically, by Canonical or Debian. They're similar, but not, you know the score, hardcore, maybe not. Now, Manjaro here is a little bit different, okay? It's based on Arch Linux. Now, pure Arch users won't like you very much if you use this, okay? Because you're not pure enough. But if you're lazy, especially like me, I can be really lazy, it's an ideal way to get into Arch. And as you see down there, I've always got a settings manager update coming through. There's a new kernel available. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, yeah, this is installed, by the way. Okay. Kernels. Let's have a look at the kernels. We get going down, baby. Okay. We've got a real time kernel there. 4918 RT14. Now, if you was doing, <clears throat> excuse my chest, <clears throat> I'm just getting over a, a, quite a bad cold and cough. If you was using a lot of uh, stuff for music, this be the one for you. I would change to that. So if I was using a lot of Jack stuff, Jack, Jack, Jack my body, I would use that. Or you can go straight to 4.10.81. But as this is working, and it's long term, we're going to keep to the LTS, okay? There's no point in changing for the moment, unless we really have to. Okay, so I'll quit that. Now remember that Manjaro is a rolling release distribution, so once you've installed it, in theory, you should not have to update it. Now this is a really good thing for some people, because they just want to install it once, and just keep running. Now... In my experience, over the many moons and moons, and moons and moons, this is not always the case. After a few years, if you're a heavy user, you're going to want to just reinstall. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not. So that's, that's that bit of moaning out of the way. Anyway, why have I chosen Manjaro? Well, Manjaro, I would say, is you could use it as a beginner. It would be a reasonable good choice for a beginner, if you want to get into Arch. But you actually wouldn't know what Arch was, would you, really, to be honest with you? So, no, you wouldn't. No, it's just a computer. You're just looking at a screen. That's all you're seeing as a new user. If it was a medium to intermediate user, and you started off with Ubuntu, or Lubuntu, or Zubuntu, or Kubuntu, or Gnome Buntu, or all the other Buntus out there in the world, which there are millions of, okay? And you might say to yourself, I want to try something different, okay? I want to try something arch-based, but I don't want to have to go through all the command line stuff all the time. Manjaro is one of the distributions. There are several others. Bridge is another one that comes to mind straight away that may be ideal for you. But you want to get into Arch. For simple reason, it is quite a lot quicker at the end of the day. Now, when they say it don't break, do not believe them. It will break in the end. You may be really lucky and run it for a while, and you'll think, hunky-dory, no, no problem. But once you start playing with it a little bit and going to do different stuff, it may just go poof over the top and say to you, no mate, it's not happening anymore. Installation, please. Lovely. Job. That's how a bit of moment out of the way. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you around why you might want to use it. Now, I'm using the XFCE desktop here. And this is the latest release. Now, I had this on my system anyway, as it is, okay? Now, this is 17.0.1. This is 64-bit version. As you know, most distributions are going 64 only now. Although you can rewrite the kernel for a 32-bit one if you really wanted to. If you was in that way inclined, of course. So it's called Geliva. They get all these weird names from sometimes. Like do pie or pasty or something like that. Like pasty Linux. You know it's going to be really nice and tasty. They have everything you really want inside it. And then just make you want more afterwards. Yeah. Anyway, this is the first screen you get when you boot up. And I said to you, this is installed anyway. Because I had it on the system, so I thought I'd quickly do it for you as I've got a quick two hours as the sneaky wife and the sneaky girl's gone out to the cinema. Okay, so I've got a bit of time to myself. Anyway, this is the screen you get. Documentation is all there for you. Chat room, mailing list, donate, bloody, 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 blah. That will launch at startup every time, unless you unclick this. Yeah, that's that bit out of the way. Okay, it is really, really a basic XSCE. I have changed the fonts already because the standard ones I don't like. I don't particularly like the desktop personally. It's a bit too Kubuntu-ish for me. So what I'll do, while we're hanging around and having a little chat, we'll go to desktop settings. We'll go back to them in a second. We'll go for an older desktop setting. Older one, older, older one. Don't want it too bright, do we? Don't want it too dark. Of course we get Classic. Go to a classic Ninja I one. Yeah. That's nice, isn't it? That's a bit easier on the eye, so to say. Because my eyes are getting a bit old now. 
the menu is in the usual place for XFC. Remember, you can place the bar anywhere you want it to. Uh, a lot of people, I used to actually put the bar on the top and then put a Cairo dock down the bottom. And then I got bored doing that because it just wasn't for me. Really, back in the day. That's, anyway, why do you want to use it? Fast, firstly. Nice. Lots and lots of managers for your software. So you can go um, pack, for Pac-Man, whatever you call it, for command line. Well, there's Pac-Mac for one GUI, and the other one is Octopi. So there's free software managers, okay? What you recently used? Oh, yeah. And then software, blah, blah, blah. software update. We'll go to software update, see if I need any software. I don't actually need any software because I've already checked for you. The only one thing I didn't like, I'll get a battery bar already, you know? I, I, I have got about it. It's a desktop, okay? So you should be able to know if I'm on a laptop or a desktop. But hey, that's just a little niggle. You can customise that out of the way yourself if you wanted to. So if we click on the bar here and go to panel on properties, maybe. Blah, blah, blah. No, don't worry about that one. So sometimes I'm just go to panel. Panel preferences, maybe. Okay. You can change the appearance, etc., everything you wanted to, and add more panels if you want to. And whatever items you want on there, okay? So your whisker menu, because it uses whisker for its menu. Yes, I know. Lots of them do now. Separator, show desktop, workspace switcher. Notification area, which is an external one again. If I click on that, it will show you where it is. A clock and C buttons and actions. Okay. Yeah, so that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah, it's not. Nice and easy. It's your usual file manager, so I won't bother getting into that. The software you get with it is basically basic, okay? But it's more than you get with Zubuntu or Debian. That's all I'm going to say. So if we simply go to internet, just for one reason, you go get Firefox for your default browser. Now if I quickly click on that and open it up and you'll see what I mean. They've actually changed the browser's designation. For some reason, I don't know. I did read earlier, maybe it'll be on here when we boot up, okay? No, it isn't, okay. If we go to news, it may be there. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. As of the 2nd of April, there's a load of updates. We recommend you use Pac-Man for this update. Because it's got the new message stack in it, okay? So this is the thing, when you're going to intermediate distros, sometimes, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to get, get down and dirty in the terminal. And some people just don't want to do that. I mean, I can understand it. If you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. And that's why a lot of people do stick with the Ubuntu. Because it's all done for them. But if you want to know more about your system, this is a good way of doing it. Okay. Now, installation takes no time at all. Basic installation takes up around eight gigs, seven and a half, eight gigs, and that's with basic system. Everything you really need to get going. Okay. It uses the uh, Crispy Squid uh, installer, which I really like. I put a bit of dip on it while I was waiting. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to the system. What was I doing? I don't know. Education. You don't get nothing. Yep, part of the LibreOffice suite. Under games, Steam is already there. It's not the whole Steam, you have to install it from there, but I'll give you that just in case. Under graphics, Gimpy is standard, and View Noir. Under internet again, we we'll go down there. Avi browser server, and blah, 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 blah. The Fox is there, Hex Chat, Pigeon, Steam again. Doesn't need to be in that menu really, or, well, it is on the internet, so I could be lying, okay. Phantom Multimedia. I do love Guadalcube, but it's just not quite there yet still. I use it as my secondary player. I use Clementine as my main player. Okay. Your pulse settings, QT V4L2, so your stuff will run, especially using webcams. They also media player, which you'll happily play all your stuff, which would be ideal. And XF Burn for burning your CDs and DVDs. As you can see, Sneaky Boy put a video on his phone there. He's a naughty boy. I must kill him later. I've only installed one thing here, for the simple reason on my main system I've just done this myself. I've actually installed a new version of Caden Live, so I'm going to start doing 4K video now for YouTube. I've been doing 1080 60 frames a second for quite a long time now. If we go to settings, you get a choice of what you want to do. Well, by the way, if you've never used Caden Live before, uh, be prepared for a bit of a steep, steep bar of learning. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so go to configure and project defaults. You get a choice of your defaults. Now I've got it set here to 4K Ultra HD because my main telly does that, so it looks nice on my telly. I don't know if you've watched any YouTube videos on your TV and you've got a, a 1080 or 4K uh, TV, it looks fantastically beautiful, yes. So play you just want to do 1080 though. Full 1080, okay, down there. You can go straight up to 60 if you wanted to, you can't go any further. But would you want to? No, because the file size gets enormous. I don't even want to know what size the file size is going to be once we go to 4K. It's going to be like 
a while. I've been lucky enough I live in an area where my internet connection is really fast. So if I'm doing a really large upload, it doesn't take a couple of minutes. But going back a few years when it wasn't so fast here in the middle of the sticks, it wasn't very good at all. Okay. You know, go back to where I was here. Although they're just 4K DCI. Oh, that's the other oh, one. Wow. We're going to that another time. So I'll change it back there. Okay. Hunky dory. Jack and Ori. So, Manjaro. Intermediate users only, really. Okay. You can give it a try if you're a new user, but I wouldn't. If you're an advanced user, you may get a bit bored and break it several times trying to do kernel updates. But at the end of the day, it's up to you what you want to do. What Linux for you? Says it all. Sneaky Linux. I see you later. Bye bye.